Up next, we have Jeff Atkinson. All right, so my name is Jeff, and this is going to be more of a story than anything else. Basically, what I, when I first started security, I picked up a, uh, a box off of the curb during garbage day, and I was like, okay, i got to try something. So I got OpenBSD installed on it, and I threw Snort on it, and I'm like, yes, I'm a security guy. And I went for my first, surf, my first interview, and the guy's like, have you ever done anything with Snort? I said, yes. He said, do you know what the config file is? I said, I don't know. But regardless, one of the things I really like are logs, and there's lots of logs, and this is why, because visibility of all the different things you can see, it's imperative. The, the thing in the, the middle was just the IDS signature. Everything else around it, that's what really happened. And Ashish did a really good job of showing that. My favorite Unix thing that I do is I grep caret event from the event.bif so I can see what events I want to do when I start scripting. And it worked pretty good. Now, my favorite script is this one, print C. Has anybody used print C before? It's nice. It's wonderful. It gives you a lot of information. And, um, but I had to do a little bit of formatting to make it look decent. So my, my pro tip for scripting is print C so you can see all the junk that's in there. And when you start parsing that out, you're just going to pull your hair out and wonder what these guys are thinking when they, when they put it together. But it works, and it's a lot of good information. And you know, being able to identify all those different fields is, is imperative. So some of the things, Pyramid of Pain, if you guys are familiar with it, we want to try and move our way up from IOCs to artifacts in the network to the tooling that the adversaries use. X509 is our example of artifacts. JAW3, we've heard a lot about that, so I'm not going to say anything about it. I know I'm going to have to fix it because I hear it's not very good. It's not very performant. But anyways, so we're going to work on fixing that up, and um, i got to get control of the repository back. And the important things are know what's on your network, know that the JAW3 is really the system libraries, what the libraries are that were used to build it, to, to build that application. And that's what generates the combination of stuff. So this one, title slide's gone. This one's hash. You can do the same technique looking at the, the metadata out of the exchange for the SSH connections, and you can build an algorithm that way. And uh, it was really funny. The guys are like, hey, I got this idea. Let's do this. And I'm like, I can print C. Let's go do it. So it was fun. Um, so RDP, we came up with an RDP fingerprinter based off the same stuff. And we looked at all the, the channels and security and coding and all those things. Didn't matter. It's going to be TLS most of the time anyways. So we were covered by JAW3. Worked out pretty good. Um, but you got to be careful with, with TLS and, and relying on JAW3 too much because there are some techniques out there. Adele. Adele and I have worked on some of these projects together, and he, he's over the HoneyNet project, and he saw that the scanners were starting to randomize their, their cipher suites and causing unique JAW3s, <clears throat> which was, you know, was expected. We released it, and it's going to change. But we didn't expect this one. This is a library, a Go library, that you can use to recompile implants, and you can start controlling what their actual, um, what their JAW3, their cipher suite's going to look like. So the big questions, uh, my titles are gone, but that's okay. How do we get a list of JAW3 applications? That's what everyone's looking for, and JAW3 was a good, a good option, and um, I really, I'm going to have to look into that some more. One of the things I wanted to see is how do we get system information tied directly to the bro logs. So you can see in the red that you've got connection information, and I want to use community ID, so I've got to find that one. And then you can see in the yellow, that's the actual the, the path to the, the binary itself. So with Sysmon, you can have event three, you can have the process creation, and you can see that the network, uh, the network connection tied directly back to the executable, and then send it to win log beats, and then to log stash, and then to broker, and then on to, on to bro. <clears throat> now, if you try and do this in a sim, you're going to have some really complex data sets. You have to do searches within searches and then combine those together based on process ID and network connections. And it gets really hard. My Splunk servers catch fire. My Splunk admin gets mad at me. This one right here, this is um, Cisco Mercury. They have a different uh, fingerprint, but they show all the cipher suites and everything in there. And that's me. That's my lightning talk. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>